G'day fellas and welcome to a very special casted game. Spawning in on the east side of the map. Playing as the Abbasid Dynasty, it is Bum9. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what the name is all about, but uh, where I come from, your bum normally means your backside. So that is an interesting name. And very curiously, he's the ninth one. Not the eighth, not the seventh, not even the first one. He's going to be the ninth one. But his teammate spawning to the north of him is going to be CZ, 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 who we're just going to be calling CZ. He's going to be playing the English today. And this, by now, you should have realized, is a 2v2. On the opposite side of the map, spawning in as the blue French player, we've got Zhuge Liang. And he is teaming up with the world's greatest RTS player who has ever lived. It is Serral on the Chinese. That is correct. We are casting a Serral game. We've casted one Serral game before on this channel. The first one was against De Muslim. It was on Hillendale, and De Muslim went for this ludicrous push where he made a whole bunch of sprinkles and walled them in, and Serral still somehow overcome him. Overcome him? Overcame him? Overcame him? Uh, but in this game, it is a 2v2. Serral has been playing Age of Empires 4. As you guys will be aware, the new ranked season has been dropped. I got very excited when I saw Serral was online, that he was playing, that he was in-game, but then I saw it was a 2v2, and I got even more excited because I love a good team game. The Age of Empires 4 team games, I'll be honest with you, they're just not as fast paced as I remember Age of Empires, like previous Age of Empires games being. I remember like Age of Empires 3, I had units in my base at like 4 minutes 40 in team games. In in Age of Empires 4, I don't know, it just doesn't feel as, as, uh, as, as quick, as fast. But Serral, going to be opening us up with a mill. You can see he's got a beautiful little base layout. Berries nice and close to the wood line, as all Chinese players love. Let's go check in on Bum, see how Bum is doing. Bum just going to be opening up with a single scout, going for a classic scouting route. I like this one. You can see he's just shift clicked. Like, he's shift clicked to here, the crossing. He shift clicked down to there. Shift clicked to this corner. He's probably shift click over to here. He has got a very methodical scout path. But on the other side, up towards CZ, 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 he is going to be adding in some farms. Now, one of the things I will mention is that all of these players are team players. That means that they preference team games. Now, I'm, I'm not going to say that about Sarah, but these other guys definitely do. These guys are quite high ranked when it comes to their team games. So I expect that we are going to be having quite a show today. Now, one of the things to note is we are on Mongolian Heights, and Mongolian Heights has been recently updated. Uh, but one of the things that uh, still looks like it might need a little bit of work, it's these cliffs. These cliffs, as, as you guys will know, Age of Empires 4 maps are procedurally generated. That means that the game has instructions about what to do with regard to spawning the map, but not necessarily definitive instructions. When it comes to this cliff face, you know, the height of the cliff face, the way that it looks, all this kind of stuff, it's random. It's random. But uh, this map, of course, being Mongolian Heights, is naturally going to have more cliffs in it because that is how the procedurally generated maps work. Now, interestingly, we do have a river in the middle of the map that has spawned, uh, which always spawns on Mongolian Heights, but it hasn't been taken yet by any player. Speaking of players, let's hide that so you no longer need to see it. But we've got ourselves a School of Cavalry beginning to open up here from Zhuge Liang. Uh, and at the same time, down to the south, we've got our first landmark. It's going to be the Imperial Academy for Serral. Over towards Bum 9, our, our age up is going to be the Economic Wing. No real surprises there. And up towards the north as the English. It doesn't even look like we've got a landmark just yet. He's taking his time. He's, he's getting his farm on. And I like this. It's a, it's a team game. You can take your time. And I think that's something that I really like about team games. It is the fact that you can take your time in team games. Uh, it, and I don't say that in a, in a bad way. I say that in a good way. If you want to be greedy, then you can be greedy. And you can ask your teammate to cover you. And we can see right now, CZ, 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 as he is known to his friends, or as he's known to me, CZ, uh, he is doing his best uh, to focus on his economy in these at these early stages in the game. We can see he's getting a wheelbarrow. He's really going quite ham on the farms. And I suspect this is probably something that we're going to start to see head into more one versus one uh, for the English. You can see we're at four minutes now, and he's still nowhere near aging up. And actually sending a villager out, probably going to be looking to wall up this crossing towards the north. But there is no sign that he's aging up, and for very good reason. He doesn't need to age up. He's scouting out his opponent. He sees exactly what his enemy's up to. Doesn't see that he's on stone just yet, but uh, he knows he's not going to be fast, especially once he gets this wall up in the middle of the map. You can see that the wall going to be coming up about 4 minutes 40. It's really not going to leave many options for his enemy to cross. There's another crossing down a bit further, and of course, the final crossing down towards the bottom, but nothing too crazy. And he's going to keep his villager in the middle, and you can see he's going to start working on that wall. But now Bum9 has made it up to the next age. We'll check in with him and see how he's doing. 
Looks like he is going to be going for a second town center. You can see he's quite intently gathering up that stone. So going to be looking to research his unique technology, fresh foodstuffs, reduce that cost of his villages down nice and quickly. But Zhuge Liang has, uh, has over on the other side of the map now aged up as well. Our French player. And he is looking to do the same thing. So everybody adding a TC. You get a TC. You get a TC. Everybody gets a TC. And that's exactly what Zhuge Liang goes for here. Going to be dropping that town center down nice and early. Let's check in with Cyril, our uh, our star of the show right here. It is Cyril. And boy, oh boy, do I have to compliment this base building. So for anybody unfamiliar, base building is a technique, a strategy, a philosophy of mine. I love it's, I, I think that base building is, is one of the most underrated uh, parts, especially of Chinese gameplay. It's really important to build a good base. And we can see that Serral actually understands that incredibly well. Uh, so most people in this situation would be like, oh, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to place my Imperial Academy on this side. I'm going to get the mill just. I'm going to get the lumber camp just. And I'm also going to get my gold mine and my stone mine. And they'd think that's a real... Oh, no. Oh, no. Serral. Oh, no. Serral. Don't, don't give him the sheep delivery. Serral. Ah, uh, Serral wasn't paying attention. I, I, I will remind you guys. Serral, currently rank 14 in the world. Um... Even he makes mistakes. Even he makes mistakes. Even the god himself, uh, he makes mistakes. Uh, but that's probably because he's focusing so heavily on his economy back home. That is correct. We have a Song Dynasty coming through with a second town center already. This guy means absolute business. A lot of villagers here on wood as well. I don't know how he's going to support his villager addiction because that is a lot of villagers on wood and even more are heading to wood now. Uh, he's going to need a lot more to support these double town centers on a Song Dynasty. He's going to have to be pulling out 100 food every 13 seconds if he wants to be keeping up with those villagers but now we see a villager moving to the middle of the map i suspect there might be walls up because we are entering into a bit of a boom phase in this game so for anybody unfamiliar with Serral, uh if you don't want to use google that's okay i will tell you a little bit about him uh Serral is a starcraft 2 professional he has more than a million dollars in winnings and just this year alone he has won more than 180,000 us dollars uh through his various tournaments and whatnot uh now that that is not all of his earnings you know he's probably got earnings from his sponsors probably got earnings from his stream because uh, he does stream a little bit um but, uh, you know, there's... Oh, isn't that frustrating? Isn't that frustrating? You can see there's a pillar right there. Uh, and they somehow managed to make their way through. I don't know how that is that they can do that on the pillar. Because you can actually delete that pillar without any um, compromise of integrity to the wall. But it looks like Serral going to be losing his villager in the middle. Uh, but yeah, Serral is a StarCraft 2 pro. He is the best StarCraft 2 player in the world. And unfortunately, there's not much of an, a, a strategy scene anymore. Uh, you know, if, if, this, if this video was 10 years ago, actually, you know what? If this video was 15 years ago, uh, then I would be talking quite a, a lot about the strategy scene. You know, that we've got all these new games coming out, but there's not a very big strategy scene anymore. But uh, the remnants of it are somewhat controlled or owned by uh, Serral. He's incredibly good. He's uh, better than... Better than every single player that ever lived before. I'm very happy to, to say that when it comes to RTS. Now, obviously, you know, that, that is with the exception of people like Viper. You guys will be familiar with him from Age of Empires 2. Uh, but uh, I, I would almost go to the extent of saying, well, Serral, with regard to his prize pool, um, is uh, is doing a little bit better than, than Viper is uh, at the moment. And I guess there's multiple ways that you can judge the quality or not necessarily the quality, but the ranking of, uh, of players at that level villager being very cheeky firing off some ranged arrows towards this position but uh, i can't help but feel like prize money is, is a good way to do it maybe you can just say he's like he's the the most decorated i don't know if decorated is the right term but do we have is that a stone wall what is that you can see that the the way that it comes around there i thought a stone wall might have been going around but uh it doesn't seem the case uh players booming up at this stage everybody is just having a bit of a boom fest now keep in mind of course this is a high ranked 2v2 but at the same time uh, this is on Mongolian Heights. So Mongolian Heights, naturally a bit more of a boomy map, a little bit more choke points. Uh, it, it Unfortunately, uh, it, it spawns... 1v1 Mongolian Heights spawns very well. 2v2 Mongolian Heights... It, actually, when I look on the minimap, I kind of get a little bit worried about like this formation. I'm not sure if you guys see what I'm seeing right now, but it's looking like one cliff off a very bad symbol. Um, so look, look uh, it's, it's got a bit of work to do the map, the, the map formation. Uh, let's just say, let's just put it that way. But uh, we'll check in with Serral. We'll see how he's doing. Because uh, as, as I mentioned before, he's going to be the guy that we're focusing on because this is his Chinese. And of course, this is team games. So Ch Ty Chinese team games. Uh, they are a very strong sieve in the Chinese, uh, or in, in the team game manner. A very strong booming sieve, and at the same time, a very good late game sieve. Villager almost going down there, but Sarah manages to get a couple of spears out. You can see him chrono boosting, aka supervising 
Uh, that barracks down towards his his base. Not gonna have any luck there, bum nine. You're gonna have to head back to the toilet with that one, mate. But um, but yeah, at, at this point in time, uh, Cyril looking pretty decent. You can see very in interestingly, he's got a mill on each of his, or he's got an outpost on each of his mills, just to make sure that you know if there's any potential raids that do come through, he's got a place to garrison safely. And that's what we saw him do down here. So let this be a lesson to you guys that are out there, you know, playing Age of Empires four in the team games, and you you, you know maybe dealing with a few more raids. Make sure you chuck down an outpost on it as well. But now, his opponent might be suffering the same fate that he was, except it looks like it might be a bit more deadly this time. Is that a double hunt back there? No, it's just going to be the single hunt. One villager going down, and Bum going to be making his way around the back of the base of the blue player. But uh, now, we take a look over at how Bum is doing. You can see that uh, the castle age is going to be coming in for Zhula Gang. Uh, did I just call him Zhula Gang? Uh, Zhuga Lig... <laughs> Zhuga Liang. Uh, there we go. That's probably a little bit better. Uh, I'll probably just go with, uh, with, with Zhu at this point in time. It's going to be a bit easier. Uh, but uh, now back towards the base for Bum. You can see a lot of production is coming through for him. He's on the two town center play. Doesn't look like he's gone for a three. The best way is probably going to be for me just to check the stone outcropping. Nice little raid coming in underneath the second town center as well. But uh, just going to be diverting attention at the moment. And keep in mind, our, our mind is always going back to China, right? Like, it, it, it's always about this Chinese late game. Because, as you guys will know, Chinese late game is notoriously difficult to deal with. They have the strongest siege in the game. Uh, very strong uh, pound for pound. They've also got the granaries uh, that have recently been recently been changed around. So they're actually a bit more viable. So we'll have to check in with how Serral is doing and see... You know, if he, if he even looks to go for those granaries, uh, we, or granaries, sorry. But uh, now Sarah going to be coming out to defend his wall. He says, hey, get back there. Uh, but a uh, nice little melee comp coming in from Bum. Uh, no, ranges, no ranged units at this stage. Uh, but So just going to be sticking it with the melee composition. Uh, but now the Castle Age is going to be coming through for both of our players. We're at the 12-minute mark. Um, and uh, it definitely seems like CZ is a fan of farming. He's got all of the sheep here. At, at this point, I would be sending them over to my teammate. I feel like this is probably an appropriate thing. If you've got a scout, just take it over there. Usher them over there because you're not going to use these sheep. These sheep will literally be here. We, we will come back to this this base at, you know, 45 minutes, 50 minutes, and those sheep will still be chilling out there. But now we can see CZ under attack. Serral reaches the castle. We'll go check in with Serral, see how he's doing as he begins to farm around the town center. Interesting that he goes for farms around the town center. Not going to be looking to add in granaries. Uh, so as you guys are aware, the granary now available in the second age, as long as you've unlocked the Song Dynasty, which we can see that he has. So not going to be adding it in, and interestingly, not adding up any mills around these either. Just going to be sticking to classic farms on the town center. Now, a lot of people might look at that and go, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that, Drongo. And you're right, there's nothing wrong with that. But are you really taking advantage of all your Chinese mechanics? You're actually losing quite a fair bit of tax, uh, especially considering the fact that you're underneath your Imperial Academy here. So you, every time you drop off, you are gaining up tax. Uh, and it, it's a, a way to grab a huge amount of gold. Like right now, you can see Serral at the moment is sitting at two out of four Imperial Academy, uh, Imperial officers. He could be sitting at four out of four. Have a look how much is sitting inside these. Lumber Camp Zero, 198 in this one. 322 in this one. Each of these military production buildings, whenever it makes a unit, are also going to be able to do it. But we can see, you know, he's got 34 villagers here. He could be supervising this. So even though he's one of the world's best players, still got a way to go with his Chinese. But let's see how he goes right now, because he's going to be under attack. At least his enemy is over on the other side. Attacks happening all over the place. We'll tune in with Bum and see how he's doing as he heads up to the Castle Age. You can see he's got a nice little composition here. Bit of a Castle Age push that's coming up. Battering Ram was going to be going up. Does go down. Uh, but now, just uh, looking to try and take out these knights. He's doing a pretty decent job here as he's going to run underneath the town center. Serral's teammate, uh, Zhuge Liang, is, uh, is going to start to struggle to gain any economic advantage as he continues to lose villages. Guildhall sitting on food at the moment. Still yet to change it over. Trying to hold on with knights. And we can definitely see that there's a bit of an advantage starting to swing the way of Bum9 and CZ. Uh, but back towards the north, you can see that uh, CZ is under attack by that outpost just doing work. But slowly but steadily, this, uh, this raid or this attack begins to fizzle out. And Serral and his teammates slowly make their way back into it. Veteran Spearman, going to be all that is needed in this situation. But we'll take a look over with our English player and see how they're doing. CZ, 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 as he is, uh, as he is known. Um, slowly but steadily, adding in more villages. He's sitting on 67 villages at this point in time. Loses all of the army over towards that side, with the exception of two knights. We'll check in with his ally, Bum9, and see how he is doing. 
Uh, Bum9, he's going to be up on a very comfortable 74 villagers. And production is really starting to kick off. A lot of resources that are being stacked up at this point in time, he's not spending. Now going to be looking to get those stone walls down and, uh, and now really look to try and take over the game. But we've got ourselves a forward keep coming in from CZ. Very nice play. Looking to try and force the fight over to his enemy's side and keep it over on the enemy's side. Because keep, keep in mind, if you're fighting on the enemy's side, then you're not fighting on your own. You're not fighting in your own economy. You're fighting in the enemy's base. And that's somewhere that you typically would want to be fighting. But now we see Serral beginning to push back slowly but steadily. Zhuge Liang is going to be happy that he's got Serral on his team in this situation. We can see Zhuge Liang beginning to suffer a little bit here. He's got 70 villagers, but no population space. So going to need to drop down some emergency houses. We hear them going down somewhere. Uh, I'm not sure exactly, but he is housed right now like a Terran player, and it is not fun. Uh, and that is that is uh, just a classic little StarCraft joke for anybody unfamiliar with Serral. Uh, he is a StarCraft 2 player who loves to play the Zerg. Uh, but uh, now we can see Bum9 managing to wall up this crossing completely, even though those walls uh, do take a little bit longer. But now a battle beginning to break out in the middle of the map over on the side of Serral and Zhuge Liang. As he looks to try and hold on, we can see those veteran spears are coming out. For anybody unsure of how to tell the difference between veteran spears and normal spears, a veteran spear's got this little pointy bit. Uh, so th they really, like... It, it, to me, when I think of his veteran spearman, I think of, like, a man who's going to stab you and he's going to pull out all of your guts with his spear. And that's exactly what you can see right here. Uh, whereas, like, a normal spearman, you know, just like a, a, a spearman that's yet to be upgraded, they do not have that. So he, here you can see the, the Abbasid spears uh, have also got the same thing. At least they should. Yeah, they, there you go. It, it's a little bit hard to see sometimes because it, it's, uh, it's, it's two-dimensional. But uh, that is the best way to see it. It's, and it's just going to be a single uh, a single blade for just your, your normal spears. But now that keep is up. And uh, Serral going to be losing a lot of reinforcements here. He's going to be aware of his enemy. We'll check on his village account. He's on 105 villagers at the moment. So very comfortably ahead of his enemies at this point. Now the palace guard spam begins. He's also got the nest of bees as well as trebuchets beginning to enforce the front line. And now going to be losing villagers. Got to be careful in this scenario. Indeed, he falls back. He is going to be turning his attention towards his base. And what a beautiful base it's got. Serral, definitely one of the strongest base builders, I would have to say. Uh, I love the way that he's buffing up all of this. But we don't see a lot of military production in this. A lot of houses. Uh, but not really taking advantage of that military production. So Serral definitely could use an Aussie Drongo video or two. And, and learn a little bit on that base building. Because this... It could use a lot of work. It could use a lot of work, Serral. <laughs> you know, I, I've recently just become a, like a big fan of base building with the Chinese because it's so important that, like for, for late game scenarios just to get up a little bit of extra resources having the best possible base uh, but we'll take a look at how his production is doing Serral at the moment sitting on six production facilities so not doing too bad starting to stack up the resources as well we'll see how his opponents are starting to do now uh, we see that push really coming into Zhuge Liang's base we'll just say the French player we'll just say the French player that's probably easier <laughs> uh, so now the French player going to be under attack you can see that outpost going to be going up but uh, villagers next to it going to be going down uh, meanwhile so losing about one two three four villagers there and uh, now going to be pushing in a lot of longbows in this position but keep in mind Serral I can smell him I can smell him Actually, no, that is the garlic downstairs. That is the that is what my fiancé is cooking up for, to eat right now. That is not Serral. But uh, now, now we've got uh, longbows that are getting themselves into a bit of a tough position because they don't need to be worried about the palace guards. It's what's behind them that they need to worry about. Now, Bum going to be pushing in, holding on. CZ trying his best. And now the palace guards going to be coming in. These guys have got their plus two ranged armor. So they are going to be very happy. And now look at the nest of bees begin to witness all their beautiful glory right now. Nest of bees just having an absolute party firing in on those, uh, on those longbows. But uh, almost a bit of a, I would say like a 2v1, but at the same time, I mean, we do see that uh, Zhuge Liang is coming in. He's going to be able to clean up these longbows, doing a great job of keeping all the spears here. If you're fighting spears against spears, that is perfect if your enemy's got, if your enemy doesn't have cavalry. If your enemy has cavalry, you want your spears to be fighting up against your, or up against their cavalry. Uh, but now, continuing to move forward, we hear those nest of bees taking up the reinforcements. Uh, I don't think they've actually got a, a very difficult minimum range. Look at the damage that comes out from those Nesta Bees. That's pretty damn decent. Doing all, more than 90 damage uh, in that volley. But now going to be able to hold on. CZ's attack, as, as well as Bum, going to be repelled. And we can see that that central keep is going to be under attack. And it looks like the fortifications have now began to build up for Serral. Serral has got that keep down. He's got his trebuchet sitting behind it. And he is looking to try and take control of the game. Still got a couple of narrow choke points that are, are open. So he's yet, we were yet to see him wall up. Uh, so you could always go for like a nice little wall along the back line here. You know, a nice little wall just segment there. Just to prevent any raids from coming through. It definitely makes you feel a little bit more comfy. But I think that that's, that's a very sort of 
difficult way to get around. But now at the same time, towards the front, the Longbow is looking to regroup here. We'll check in on CZ, CZ and see how he's doing. Uh, as he's going to look to continue trying to clean up this. And Microing back, you can see he's got 10 attack at the moment against the 5 armor of Serral's units. And look at the Palace Guards beginning to come through. Palace Guards looking to try and take control of the battle. Serral just getting in there. Beautiful surround coming through for him. That looked absolutely amazing the way he had those come through. Serral's micro very impressive in that scenario. Obviously no snare coming through in Age of Empires 3. So all of those units... Or I, I say Age of Empires 3, Age of Empires 4. There was snare in Age of Empires 3. But in Age of Empires 4... There was not, or there is not. Uh, so that's why I'm thinking about Snare. But now up towards the north, look at this. Serral, despite being on the south side here, has actually began moving towards the north side. And looks like the rams are going to work towards opening up this central position. Uh, interestingly, you can see that they just leave themselves a, a very small hole. Not going to be big enough for themselves to fit in. And so they're going to have to start working on the rest of that wall. And now Serral begins to slowly push forward. We hear those trebuchets firing off the boulders as they land on that keep. And what a beautiful position. Like... You can't, like, you got to just admire the way that Age of Empires 4 looks in this position. Let's head into cinematic mode right now as we watch to try and track this boulder. Oh, there it goes. Boom. It is, it is absolutely beautiful to watch uh, as, as the, uh, as Serral tries his best to take down that keep. But uh, now at the same time, CZ going to continue pushing out. Serral going to be holding on. He's got a couple nest of bees back here. And that's all he really needs. But now at the same time, villagers trying to repair. We can see the boiling oil still yet to come in. A couple palace guards going to be sitting underneath here. Nest of bees firing off towards this position. But then Lancers are going to be able to take down the first trebuchet. Second trebuchet looking to try and stay alive. But at the same time, probably going to need to pull villagers. He's running the he's running the trebuchet around. You can see that uh, Zhuge Liang's trying to defend it as best that he can. But Serral not yet pulling villagers. He's intent on keeping the keep alive instead. Now going to be pulling the villagers instead. The villagers managed to make it to the second trebuchet and all of the units here for Serral are still looking strong but we see in the middle of the map it is a Barkshire Palace coming down for, C for CZ CZ. That is correct. The Barkshire Palace coming down on the front but at the same time look at Serral just being very annoying. A keep coming down for his opponent at the backside still under attack over on this wall and it looks like this keep may go down. He's got to be careful because Serral now coming to push out the nest of bees. We're we'll heading to the cinematic mode as all the villagers go down. Serral looks to take out all of the villagers. The, the palace guards are coming in and looking to do a little bit of protection, but so much damage. And oh my lord, the nest of bees do so much damage. Look at that. And just when you thought mangonels were the only ones that were overpowered. Hold a minute, ladies and gentlemen. We've got ourselves a little bit of a party in the base of uh, CZ CZ because I don't think this landmark's getting up and he's going to be losing it and with it all the resources that go with it. He manages to get the landmark up. He taps it away. Two villagers. One villager makes it inside. One single villager. And now the Barkshire Palace looks to hold on. There doesn't look to be a lot of siege coming out from Serral at this point in time. Two trebuchets down towards the keep. But you can see the keep struggling to stay alive. Serral just healing it up as much as he can. 15 villagers down here. And now a push trying to be coming out or breaking out of the base from CZ. He manages to make it to Imperial. He's got a lot of, unit or a lot of uh, money in the bank that he can be spending. But now Serral looking to siege down this land mark from his opponent as well the trebuchet just doing so much work and all of the villagers that were once on the front lines looking to repair up the keep of cz cz have now died to the nest of bees serral's nest of bee micro was 100 on point very impressive and now that landmark going to be going down you can see serral adding a third trebuchet he's maxed out he's sitting at 199 population right now still in age three but he doesn't even need to go age four he's not worried about it he'll get there eventually don't worry about him but now in the base of Serral, you can see it's very calm, very cool, very collected. A lot of villagers on food, though. Wow, that's a lot of villagers. How much food is he bringing in right now? 1920. What if I told you you could bring in the same amount of food with 32 villagers? Would you believe me? That is how strong granaries are. I'm not even kidding you. You can bring in the same amount of food with 32 villagers on granaries with the, with the same upgrades. I'm assuming... I'm just going to quickly check. I appreciate we've got a fight going out now. I need to know. He doesn't even have fertilization. Okay, that's probably why. All right, don't worry. Once he gets fertilization, he'll be looking a bit better. But now pushing up into the middle. Trebuchet's coming out. Sprinkle's coming out. Nest of bees coming out. We can see that Chinese siege coming through. Serral really looking to exploit it now. And we hear that landmark going down. Where is it? It's not at the back of the base. It's at the back of the base. I take it back. He is really putting this towards the back. So... I guess cognizant of a landmark snipe potentially. Is that what he's thinking is? Normally with a spirit way, you'd kind of want it up the front because that's where you can bring in your reinforcements for a little bit of a cheaper price. But uh, I guess he's careful. You know, in team games, the chance of a run by, it's always going to be possible. But we'll take a look with how Bum is doing now. Bum slowly but steadily bringing forces to the front line. We can see the longbow is holding on through this choke point. And now players looking to try and take control of this central location. 
He's on 127 villages. He's walled up down to the south and he's got the keep behind it. So he's not too fussed about any potential raids that come through. But at the same time, up towards the north, we've still got this opening that is yet to be closed. So we'll take a look over at CZ and see how he's doing. But now we've got a bit of a push coming out. All the Lancers looking to come through. You can see the Nesta B is going to be looking to fire down upon their opponents. We'll take a look now in the cinematic mode as the Nesta Bs begin to move forward. Cyril goes for it. He looks to commit all of the longbows. All of the longbows. Oh my lord, he keeps them alive. Fortunately, the Nesta Bs do go down. The Lancers doing a great job. Cyril losing his entire military mass at this point in time. A huge counter-attack coming through. Zhuge Liang trying his best to hold on as well with Serral, but not having a lot of luck in this scenario. The keep is up. All of the all of the uh, units do go down underneath the keep. So Bum9 going to be losing the m majority of his mass. And now attention is turned onto the longbows. Do we have the elite upgrade for these longbows? Indeed we do. You can tell by their cute little hats that they are elite. That is what you get. You get elite longbowmen and they give you a nice little hat. They say, congratulations, sir. Keep it up. Uh, that is that is how it works. But now look at the base. We've got uh, more raids coming down. CZ, CZ under attack in multiple angles. We can see that Zhuge Liang is just going ham. And now a keep going to get thrown up for him. I don't know whether it's doubtful that's going to get up and not but now attention turned back towards the middle because this keep is under attack Serral trying his best to hold on and I expect we'll probably see uh, some Imperial upgrades coming out from Serral shortly. We'll take a look at his... That's not Serral. Let's have a look at Serral's university. Serral does indeed have his university. No technologies research at this point other than uh, the chemistry upgrade, which the Chinese get for free. Uh, but Serral is trying his best to uh, to push through. He's managed to build up a nice little bit of a platform at this point. His teammate, Zhuge Liang, has reached Imperial Age. Trebuchet is moving forward. Trebuchet has got to be careful, yo. You guys have got to be careful. Uh, are they going for a Trebuchet kiss right now? Trebuchets! Serral! Serral! Not the trebuchets, Serral, no! No, not the trebuchets! Where are you taking them, Serral? Not like this! Run! Run, little fella! Run! <laughs> They're trying! But it, it's not looking pretty. It's not looking pretty. Indeed, they do go down. Villagers being too far away to be pulled. But now Serral, once again, going to be holding on with this keep. You can see Trebuchet is back for his opponent. CZ, CZ, CZ. And a Bombard coming out as well for CZ. Uh, villagers coming out, out forward. and si We can really see that right now Serral is trying to hold on. At this point, he's sitting on 140 villagers quite a lot. Elite army tactics as well as plus three coming in for him, but still yet to really uh, put a lot of units up towards his front line. You can really see he's struggling at this point. Where are his military units? It says that he should have about 60 population of military. Is this it? Is this all she wrote? I don't know. I don't know. But 65 up towards the north. We can see his teammate continuing to push through. Battering rams coming out. These guys are only one population. And now Serral continuing to struggle in the middle because the Bombard's trying to do damage. And Springle's getting some good shots out. Roller shutter triggers. He's got roller shutter triggers. This guy knows what he's doing. And going to be able to take out the enemy Springles. We can see that his enemy is still in age three. These guys are going to be just terrible little Springles. Only 10 range. Only 200 health. Nothing compared to the Chinese Springles from the clock tower. Where's the clock tower? Oh, there it is. There it is. Uh, yeah, okay. He's making clock tower spring woods, but just just not yet. Doesn't have them yet. Now looking, Nesta B is looking to take off into the middle of the into the middle of the mass. Not going to find too much. Another keep now going to be going down for Serral as that initial one did go down. And we got action everywhere. Another raid in the base of Bum. At the same time, battering rams moving up. And look at the units that are being occupied up with these. You could have just pulled 17 villagers and, and done this. Instead, you pulled 27 longbowmen. And now your push at the front is no longer a push. It is a shove. A uh, bit interestingly, going for the Barkshire Palace here means he's not going to be able to take the Wingard Palace, which means he's not going to have that trebuchet push that the English love to have in this situation. You know, a Wingard Palace, like right here, maybe right here, would just would have been perfect. The constant trebuchet mass slowly but steadily coming down throughout that late game would help him so much. You can see that, you know, you can see that uh, CZ means business right now. When he's got this many outposts around his gold mine, that is that is a man who means business. College of Artillery coming down on the front here for Zhuge Liang. I can't help but feel that's a little bit optimistic of a position, uh, considering his enemies are basically on his doorstep, quite literally burning down that college of College of Artillery, and we can really see that uh, it's not looking good for Serral right now. We'll take a look at how his upgrades are coming through. He's going for reusable barrels, looking to reduce the cost of the Nesta Bs by 25%. A very nice upgrade. Keep in mind that takes them from 300-300 to 225-225. Tw it is a very nice upgrade, really significantly increasing the strength of them in the late game. But now we can see that uh, he has reached maximum population. He's got almost 3k right now of uh, 3k of his stone built up. So he could be looking to do some keep drops. But keep in mind, his enemy is yet to really begin harassing him from multiple angles. We've just seen this full frontal attack. And I like this. This is, this is what I like to call a man fight. You know, he, he's not really getting harassed around the edges. He's just going down the middle. And that's the way it should be. That's a man fight. When two men get in the ring and they just pound each other. 
you know, bang, 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 bang. Punches, punches, punches. No blocks. That is what Serral is doing right now with his enemy. And I got to respect Bum9. And I got to respect CZ. Because they, they're doing it the right way. They're doing it the right way. All, all these raids coming through. The, these guys, yeah. Like, it's the Virgin Raider versus the Chad Manfighter. That, that is the way I see it. But now up towards the north, we can see that there's a bit of a struggle. Trying to get these stone walls back up once again. He looks like he's going to be able to seal up the crossing. Go on, go, villagers, go. You can do it. It was open for a, bl a brief second, uh, but uh, they look to have almost gotten it up. But at the same time, in the middle of the map, we've got a huge massive nest of bees beginning to build up now. Trading also coming out for Zhuge Liang. And now the elite horsemen, together with the elite royal knights, are going to be trying to get a bit of a flank here. Longbowman moving out. We'll enter into the cinematic mode because, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for a bit of a party. And CZ realizes that he wasn't invited, so he tries to fall back as quickly as possible. But at the same time, up towards the north, all the spears are looking to fight up against the palace guards. Ideally, you want to bring the spears down towards this position. Nest of bees firing off into that crowd. Going to be getting, going to be making fire works tonight. Bombard coming out as well for our French player. And CZ, CZ falls back further towards that crossing. He might have to leave his enemy for dead right now because Bum9 is taking heavy losses. Those palace guards doing so much work. And indeed, he heads back towards the crossing. He is scared of what potentially lays across the river. And indeed, it is an angry Serral and an angry Zhuge Liang as they look to try and take control of the battle on their side and take the game. Moving forward now with the Nest of Bees. We can see a huge mass of cavalry coming through. And Nest of Bees, Nest of Bees going to be looking to fire down upon the, the infantry here. Not able to get off too many shots. Actually getting taken out pretty badly. Uh, and now all of the rest of the units coming through. We haven't seen too many crazy Nest of Bees uh, in this battle, unfortunately. But still continuing to move back. CZ going to be trying his best uh, to hold on to this choke point. He realizes if he loses his choke point, he potentially loses the game. Bombard now coming through, firing down on the siege on the back line. And look at the knights. Look at the horsemen numbers coming through for, for Zhuge Liang. Zhuge Liang, do not be feared, my friend. You turn you turn around and you just go and attack him. There, there is no Scythe Storm waiting for you in this choke point. You're going to be absolutely A-OK. -okay. And indeed, he returns once again. Serral tells him, "Hey man, just just chill out. We're gonna we're gonna totally we're gonna get this beachhead. We're gonna we're gonna just chill for a bit." But Serral continuing uh, to add in more infantry at this point. We hear alarms going off towards the north as the cavalry continue to raise uh, or raid rather. Uh, but I, I'm sure they're raising as well. Raise raise your cavalry uh, as the knights now begin to charge in towards the front. You can see the uh, huge amount of spearmen trying to be built up here. Elite lions are coming out as well uh, for Bum Nine. We'll take a look from his perspective and see exactly what he sees. He's sitting in age four at the moment. He's got a fair few upgrades coming through, including precision crossbreeding. Impressive stuff from him. Bit of a raid coming out from behind. I want to see what other upgrades he's got from his House of Wisdom. Beautiful upgrades actually coming through from him. Uh, he's got a whole bunch of those really important ones, uh, but still some that he hasn't got yet. Camel support would have been wonderful in this scenario. Uh, six sprinkles, five sprinkles on the back. Nesta Beast trying to defend it. Where are those reinforcements, Sarah? More spears continuing to come down. Really struggling up against, up against this infantry composition. And, uh, and Sarah looking very, very... I guess concerned at this point in time as once again his enemy looks to try and take control of this side of the river and now the knights begin to push out we'll take a look at Zhuge Liang you can see the double cannon combination the double royal cannon combination uh, coming out and look at the sprinkles moving up from Serral great micro right there and now once again we enter into the cinematic mode because we've got ourselves another battle fighting triple nest of bees here looking to try and protect their sprinkled brethren the longbowmen moving back towards the central location spearmen coming out to try and collect them all of the lances have gone down leaving way for the nest of bees to begin making their way through and now we see the hand cannon is pushing up as well for Serral. he is getting everything out you can see five nest of bees no don't do it to him Serral. don't do it the nest of bees really looking to try and take control of this game and Serral going to begin pushing up at the same time Zhuge Liang trying his best to hold on Rebaldequin coming out for Zhuge Liang as well and look at the mass just absolutely huge bum nine just really struggling to get a, a decent foothold with regard to his military everything just keeps melting and now the nest of bees begin moving forward that's five nest of bees that could be terrible damage coming through right now as they absolutely shell the crap out of those spearmen on the ground a single spearman in here as well. And now pushing across the crossing. Zhuge Liang looks to try and take control. Nesta B's on the back line firing into the crowd below them. The fireworks are absolutely going ham right now. Watch out for the Rebaldequin. Rebaldequin firing off. And now the Nesta B's. Don't do it to him, Serral. Don't do it to him, Serral. Oh, there's massive damage here on the back line. Huge Nesta B's shots coming out on those longbowmen. You can see the Lancers as well as the Knights just fighting out nonstop. And Serral pushing through with his Nesta B's perpetually. And the Bombard's going to be trying to hold up but now the knights turn their attention towards that where are the siege engines that is the question and the answer is dead because they tap out cz cz says good game zhuge liang serral they're victorious fellas i hope you've enjoyed this casted game 
If you had, make sure you check out Serral. I'll leave a link in the description below. One of the greatest RTS players of all time. He's enjoying Age of Empires 4. And hopefully you can as well, because this game is absolutely busted. That's a good thing.